Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Gyan Sampada. In our previous class we started to discuss about the two sublattice model which is the molecular field theory of antiferromagnetism where we had an introduction and some of the important details about the model and also we were discussing about the temperature dependence on such system. And till our last class we had studied the case what happens to the system of antiferromagnetic material when temperature is greater than needle temperature. And we saw that it is going to obey Curie V's law and today we are going to continue with the same where we will be discussing about case 2 where the temperature is less than needle temperature. So this is the main region where we are going to focus because below Tn itself we observe antiferromagnetic nature. So if you have not gone through the previous class, go through it and then continue with today's class so that the result will be more effective. And now let us concentrate on case 2 where temperature is less than needle temperature. So remember that we have assumed only AB interaction and not AA or BB interaction. And due to the crystalline anisotropy, there will be one or more natural spin directions along which the spins will tend to align. So the magnetic susceptibility behavior also depends on the direction of external magnetic field. And for that, we need to consider the two cases of special interest. One is that the external magnetic field is applied perpendicular to the natural spin direction or spin axis. And second case is the external magnetic field is applied parallel to the natural spin direction. So, for case 2, we need to consider again these two subcases. Let's study it one by one. So, first one is applied field is perpendicular to both MA and MB. So, here antiferromagnetic means both are anti parallel to each other, as you can see in this diagram. MA heads towards left and MB is opposite to it in right and magnetic field is applied perpendicular to both MA and MB and due to this magnetic field the two sublattice magnetizations that is MA and MB they tend to align themselves along the direction of the magnetic field H. So what happens this results in the rotation of MA as well as MB through an angle to phi and this phi is usually very small so if you want to visualize applied field is in the upward direction due to which MA and MB will try to align along the direction of H meanwhile it makes certain angle to phi with each other that is deviation from this to this is phi and here till here is phi. So completely it will be 2 phi as shown in this diagram. And then the molecular field which is acting on sublattice B in the direction parallel to H will be equal to minus lambda MA into 2 phi. So this is for small angles. And at equilibrium this internal field will be equal but opposite to the applied magnetic field H. So we can equate both the things. 2 lambda MA into phi will be equal to H. Opposite that is why this minus sign is not here. And the V's constant is positive. And here the spins are equal and opposite to each other in case of antiferromagnetic material. So that we can say that the magnitude of MA is equals to the magnitude of MB. Thus the total magnetization along external field direction is M is equals to 
m a plus m b into phi. So, as both are equal, we can write it as 2 times m a into phi, which we are calling as equation number 9. And if we just compare equation number 8 and 9, we get the value m is equals to h by lambda. That is, we have just substituted 2 m a into phi as capital M, so that m will be equal to h by lambda. And we know that m by h is nothing but susceptibility and as we have considered h perpendicular to spin axis, we write the susceptibility as chi perpendicular is equals to m by h will be equal to 1 by lambda, which is equation number 10. And it is clear that this susceptibility is independent of temperature. So we can say chi perpendicular is the susceptibility even at kneel temperature. So at absolute zero or at kneel temperature or with the raising temperature, chi perpendicular will be equal to 1 by lambda itself because lambda is internal field constant. So this is case 1 where h is perpendicular to ma and mb. Moving to the subcase 2 where the applied magnetic field is parallel to ma or mb that is the spin axis. As such the exact calculations of chi parallel is more complicated because of the involvement of Brillouin functions and the nature we can pictureize as for antiferromagnetic material the spins are equal and opposite denoted as ma and mb and h is parallel to both the directions. So qualitatively when the field is parallel to one sublattice magnetization and antiparallel to the other sublattice magnetization the applied magnetic field will produce no resultant moment on them which means that m will be equal to 0 that is the total magnetization will be 0 at t is equals to 0 kelvin. So we can say that at t is equals to 0 kelvin chi parallel will be equal to 0 because of the same or opposite direction. But as the temperature increases the spin alignment is again upset. So slightly disturbance is created and field will be able to produce rotation of the spins. So rotation of the spins means a small magnetization is created. Due to small magnetization we can see a small amount of susceptibility is produced and chi parallel will increase from 0 to chi of Tn as temperature increases from 0 to Tn. So this is what happens when H is parallel to MA and MB. So below Tn, susceptibility of antiferromagnetic polycrystalline material is obtained by averaging the susceptibilities over all the direction. That is we need to consider the parallel component, the perpendicular component, everything. And we have seen that at T is equals to 0 Kelvin, chi parallel is equals to 0. And we are having the equation for the total susceptibility or susceptibility of a polycrystalline material is equals to 1 by 3 chi parallel at t is equals to 0 plus 2 by 3 of chi perpendicular at t is equals to 0 Kelvin. And as chi parallel is equals to 0 at t is equals to 0, we can write that chi polycrystalline will be equal to 2 by 3 of chi perpendicular of 0 itself. And if you consider T is equals to Tn that is at nail temperature chi polycrystalline will be equal to 2 by 3 chi perpendicular of 0 which is again equals to 2 by 3 of chi perpendicular of Tn or in general we can write 2 by 3 times of chi of Tn. So this is the final equation for susceptibility below Tn where we have considered both parallel and perpendicular orientations of magnetic field with respect to spin direction. And if we plot a graph of susceptibility as a function of temperature, we know that chi perpendicular is equals to 1 by lambda which is independent of temperature so that we can take it as a straight line 
parallel to x axis that is even if the temperature is increasing susceptibility is remaining same but when we consider the chi parallel component then we can observe about tn it varies according to the curie weiss law but below tn we can observe this nature so as calculation of chi parallel is more complicated by calculating chi for different spin values like spin half spin 3 by 2 spin 5 by 2 system this nature of graph is given by van vleck and we need to know what is the main contribution of the susceptibility components below tn so we need to take the average of chi perpendicular as well as chi parallel so when we take the average we observe that chi polycrystalline will be intermediate between chi perpendicular and chi parallel that is the average lies somewhere here and this is the nature of graph or the characteristic curve for anti ferromagnetic material which we had seen in our previous class while discussing about features of anti ferromagnetic material so this is for today's class where we have dealt in detail with the two sublattice model which is the molecular field theory corresponding to anti ferromagnetism so see you in our next class till then study well practice more and thank you for watching